thank you guys for joining me today. Um, everything's working. Okay. So last year, my husband and I um, went on a holiday um, right um, after Christmas and um, went into uh, January of 2023. And um, we went on a, uh, we went on a tour. Well, we, I, I booked everything. I, I planned uh, the first part to go on the islands, um, do some snorkeling and, and awesome snorkeling, by the way. Uh, the beaches, um, not really uh, as plentiful as we had thought. There's a lot of seagrass that um, is causing issues. Um, so we didn't get as much beach time as we wanted, but we, we went down with another couple and uh, really enjoyed ourselves in that portion. We spent the first half with them, and then Wilf and I uh, went into the mainland. Uh, we rented a car and we used Google Maps. Unbelievable, Google Maps works down in Belize. So uh, we didn't get into too many arguments and made our way across uh, Belize. So just to give you a little bit of uh, so here's a couple of facts about Belize. Uh, it's it's uh, known also as uh, the British Honduras until 1973, when it became an independent of uh, British rules. Population-wise, it's uh, 412,000 people. Landmass, 22,000 uh, square kilometers. Uh, it's known for um, its uh, barrier reefs, um, uh, protected and um, it's home to over 900 violent bullets. Um, so that fact, I didn't know anything about, and I was astonished uh, to, to learn. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, Currency-wise, it's uh, the Belizean dollars. Um, when I started planning for this trip, I went to the bank. Can I get some Belizean dollars? Oh, we don't have, we don't carry it. So uh, you have to either um, car carry U.S. dollars or when you get to Belize, you have to trade in your currency for Belizean dollars. Um, interestingly, um, the Belizean uh, dollar is always half of an American dollar. They never, it's, there's no fluctuation. Canadian dollar is uh, fluctuating because um, it, it's it's not set up like the, the U.S. So U.S. Um, dollars, uh, they, they really get a, a good deal um, when uh, Americans go there. Um, I was able to use debit and credit card machines very easily down there, and that wasn't a problem. Amazing, amazing food down there. Um, I was expecting Mexican food, but it's a blend of many different cultures, the French, Spanish, American, Caribbean, and Mexican. So you have many, many choices, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, especially on the mainland, but um, the islands are a little bit more expensive. Uh, we found some really fantastic restaurants. The food was um, beautiful down there. I've got lots of new pictures. Uh, language wise, English is mainly spoken. Um, there are 90% um, of the population um, can read and speak three languages English, Spanish, and Creole. Uh, Mayan language is also um, spoken with um, the people that uh, are down there. So there's lots of different languages. How do we get there from? Uh, from the prairies. Um, I flew from Regina to Calgary, uh, Calgary, Belize City with WestJet Direct. Um, I had to overnight in, in Calgary, but um, that's how we have to roll. And I think also from Kelowna, you just um, hop either to Calgary or Vancouver. Um, for the island part, we started there first and you could take a water taxi. Um, it's not right at the airport. Um, it's about a 45 minute drive into town. Um, we landed about at two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, it was kind of, um, we were pushing it 
uh, in order to take the water taxi. So we ended up taking a flight, a small little plane. There was maybe 10 people on it. Um, and it was at sunset. We kind of missed a little bit of the sunset, but we, we, uh, it was about a 15 minute flight. So really, really easy and lots and lots of choices. It was, I think about a hundred dollars, uh, us to, uh, fly and it was directly from the airport. So, um, our first day was relatively easy. Uh, we weren't stressed, um, trying to get around, uh, Getting to Belize City from North America is, is fairly straightforward. You can see there are some uh, different flights um, that you can get to uh, Belize City. Uh, so it's definitely worthwhile to check out in your travels. So our travel plan, we went, uh, we landed in Belize City. Uh, we went to Key Cocker, one of the, the islands. It's kind of... Uh, it doesn't have any vehicles on it, uh, golf carts mainly, people walking and bicycles. Um, and then we spent, we hopped on a water taxi, went over to San Pedro just because our friends were going there, um, stayed a night and then came back to Key Cocker, uh, packed up our bags and took another water taxi into Belize City before we started our trek across uh, the city, I mean the, the, the country. So we went uh, from Belize City. Uh, we spent a couple nights at Pineapple Hill along, uh, it's called the Hummingbird Highway. Unbelievably beautiful. The place we stayed at is magical. Uh, the man that created his um, uh, Airbnb place is from Canada. And um, he has these little huts in the jungle um, that are tree houses. And I never thought I would like a tree house, but it was fantastic, it was beautiful. Uh, I'd go back there in an instant. And there's a lot of um, uh, tours that are in that area, especially if you look at the Blue Hole National Park, there's um, you can go tubing, kayaking, canoeing. Uh, there are some um, ruins, uh, mine ruins, where you can actually uh, do some uh, really, um, unique experiences. And um, from there we went, uh, we went through uh, to San Ignacio, which is on the Guatemalan border. And then uh, some of the trips we went through uh, to, um, down south of there, we went to the Mountain Pine Ridge, uh, reminded me so much like the Rockies. Uh, so lots of outdoors fun activities to do. And this is kind of an itinerary of our trip. Um, and I'm gonna um, talk about day 13 to 18 with San Ignacio and day 19 to 21 um, north of Belize City. San Ignacio, I had a hard time saying that before I went there and I, I, I'm doing pretty good with that name. Um, it's on the west side of the Kale district, 15 miles from the Guatemalan border. Originally, it was named El Kale by the Spanish. There's about 25,000 people, and many of them are expats from Canada and the U.S. Uh, uh, this is the best place that I had for um, being a foodie and loving, uh, trying different cultural um, foods. Uh, I'll show you a couple pictures of some of the places we went to. Um, San Ignacio sits on the bottom of a Mayan ruin, Calquiche. Talk a little bit more about that. Uh, they have weekly markets on Saturdays. Uh, there's a river that runs through it called the McCall River that divides the city. And there are many adventure tours that originate in this community. Uh, in this picture, I'm downtown um, uh, San Ignacio, lots of artwork, lots of paintings, very, very colorful. And the other picture is of the McCall, McCall River. Uh, in my research, I was looking for unique um, cabin experiences that had kitchens, uh, it had all the facilities, but um, kind of like you're living um, in Belize. Uh, this 
just recently had opened up um, in November. And the couple that own it are from the United States. They're a young couple. They were probably in their late 20s, early 30s. Uh, the husband was in the music industry and they just uh, up and sold everything and they um, built um, uh, these bed and breakfast uh, places. Um, I've kept in touch with them and they've added a swimming pool. Um, it's really interesting to get up there because you have to take this bumpy gravel road um, in the north part of um, San Ignacio. Um, and I thought um, it's right below where um, Calpiche was. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just walk down and I'll be able to um, very easily go to the ruin site. Well, there's a huge jungle. And um, in order to get there, I had to go around and uh, find a way um, uh, through the town site. And it's it's not like Musha where the roads are straight. There's lots of windy, bumpy kind of ways of getting around here. So um, really, really lovely place. A couple were really nice. Um, and it's kind of like a little um, district, a little uh, community in this area. There's other people that live there. Uh, it's kind of like owning a cabin section. I would say that fellow across the road, uh, he was from England and he originally had the place and then he kind of opened it up for development for other people to, to join in. So this is uh, what our place looked like. It was all one unit, uh, beautiful kitchen, everything was brand new. Um, all, all of these structures are built by, believe it or not, Mennonites that moved down into Belize. Uh, they have moved there because uh, their expertise in building and their expertise in farming. So uh, we went to this place called Spanish Lookout and um, it, it's uh, one of the most modern farming communities that I ran across. And, and again, you'll see uh, they have these building companies that build these structures for uh, Canadians and Americans mainly uh, for their, their living. So again, here's um, the beautiful um, Belizean wood uh, that's incorporated into uh, this unit. Uh, the, the cat well, didn't live there. Uh, the cat came across from uh, the man that was from England uh, and, um, and uh, it, was, it was nice because I missed my cats. <laughs> So it was a, a peaceful, hilly area um, surrounded by jungle. You heard birds and the wildlife. Uh, we seen a family of gibnets, which kind of remind me of a guinea pig. Uh, it's kind of a native to the area. And um, the couple provided us with binoculars and bird books. And I could hear macaws uh, flying around in the background, all kinds of interesting birds in that area. Um, we all know that Mayans are known for their chocolate, and uh, the chocolate was something that was only given to royalty. Uh, this um, uh, was a special tour that you could take. Uh, they have a plantation where they actually grow chocolate, and uh, here uh, Wilf is grinding up. Um, there's It's quite a process. Um, you can see on the far right, uh, the the, um, the chocolate beans are about this big, or the chocolate uh, fruits are this big, and inside are these little pods, which are really remind me of uh, coffee. Similar, similar process. Um, you have to roast the um, chocolate and then you grind it. Um, so very, very similar. Um, and this is the only uh, chocolate place uh, that was available in um, San Ignacio. You could either um, do um, kind of more of uh, education on um, grinding the um, chocolate, or you could actually go to the plantation and learn more about the growing process. When there, um, we went on a coffee tour. Uh, this is, um, Belize isn't known for its coffee, um, and um, You've got all these coffee giants beside you. You've got Guatemalan coffee, you've got Costa Rican coffee, Belize. Um, it was told that 
they um, didn't have the expertise, they didn't have the climate um, like some of the other countries. So uh, we learn a lot from our host James. He is uh, a Mayan um, who um, has uh, supported uh, 12 families on his property. And he's one of the first uh, coffee um, plantations, a successful co coffee plantation um, person in Belize. Uh, he was told by many elders that it couldn't be done, uh, but he actually was able to uh, learn how to grow it properly in the conditions uh, of uh, where he lives. Uh, what I found interesting is some of the background information, and it really relates to indig Indigenous people here on how um, uh, Europeans uh, came in and took over the land. Um, in this region, um, what happened to him, he's from a, a town um, called San Antonio, um, which was founded by the Spaniards, um, but they built uh, a church on top of a Mayan temple. So they kind of just kind of destroyed other religion, their culture, uh, when, when they came into the country and kind of changed the names and everything. So you can see the process, you can see plantation, you can see the grinding, and you can see um, how he roasted the beans. And um, at the end of the tour, his wife came out, uh, she provided us with um, some Mayan cuisine. Uh, we had a cup of coffee and just kind of uh, learned um, how beautiful people they are. Another thing we did is we toured the Mountain Ridge Forest Reserve. Uh, we took, um, in this region, you don't want to take your rental cars because of the bumpy roads and because of the rains that happened. So uh, we opted out of taking our rental and hired uh, a, a, a tour company to take us. Um, and uh, we were taken by Junior. He was a great guy, provided us with some great photographs. Because sometimes you don't take really good photographs um, together. And he took some amazing pictures of us. We spent the whole day with him. We went to the Rio Cave, went to the pools and the Big Rock Falls. So it's like um, nature's um, uh, water slides. Very, very gorgeous. This is one area that really reminded me of um, the Rockies. Um, so you can see there's 100,000 acres of protected forest, uh, abandoned logging camp we went through, uh, Honduras pine and subtropical uh, forest. So there's uh, multiple kinds of trees here and many birds and animals reside in this area and refugees from Guatemala to come across the border and they hide out in the forest here. So this was our first stop, uh, the Rio, Rio Cris River, uh, the largest cave uh, entrance in Belize. Uh, you can see from my picture here, um, Wilf took that picture, I think, but um, I think the next one, uh, you can get a better sense. The middle one, it just looks like a little small um, opening, but when you look at it, th this was not my picture. <laughs> this was our guide's fantastic view of, it looks like a sandy beach inside with the, the hanging um, stagnites and stagnites. Um, just a really gorgeous picture. And it was kind of more of a panoramic photo. So he sent those to me after, which was pretty amazing. This is the second stop, the Rio Pools, which is a series of shimmery uh, natural swimming holes and um, rock slides. Uh, definitely uh, had a lot of fun here going, um, spending the afternoon in the nice sunny weather. The third stop was the Big, big Rock Falls. There was a 150 foot waterfall in the back at Creason Creek. It was a bit of a trek and down a large set of staircase, but worthwhile. We got to watch some young, brave divers. Uh, there were some uh, uh, European kids. I don't know. I wouldn't want to risk it because if something happens to you out there, it's, it's pretty out in um, the wilderness. And I don't know what your insurance coverage would be, but um, as you can see, um, pictures were not ours. Um, it was nice to have uh, 
have a, uh, someone else, another perspective when you're taking photographs. Here's our moose shot connection. Um, uh, my husband, uh, uh, he's retired military from Old Lake, and he knew uh, this fellow named Ray, uh, who he used to play poker with up in Old Lake. Um, and uh, it's through another mutual friend that said, hey, Ray's down in Belize. He's living in Belize. Why don't you look him up? So I uh, Facebooked him and we had some fabulous visits. We got to see um, how a person can actually um, buy property, um, build a house, and they built a guest house and lived down there. And they've been um, here for a couple years now. And um, they showed us some of the sites. They went on the coffee tour with us. Uh, they met us in the market. Um, uh, we did. Uh, we went to Calcash with them, and, and um, they wanted to be uh, tourists as well. So uh, uh, when we went to go visit them, we got to see our first toucan, a wild toucan. That was kind of cool. And uh, we don't really realize like some of the sounds until they say, "Hey, there's a toucan in the tree," and sure enough. Okay, so we're going to move on to, uh, I didn't spend as much time as I wanted to uh, when I'm uh, talking about Mayan culture and the ruins, but uh, the Mayan culture uh, began in uh, 26,000 BC and lasted almost 2,000 years. Belize has 15 archaeological sites uh, that have been excavated and the country has more than 600 together. Amazing amount. And imagine all those people that lived in those areas. It was uh, a very civilized culture. And you can kind of see from the map, uh, this is Belize and you can see where the, the sites were located. Um, I only got to two of them, um, but you know, for those uh, Mayan um, archaeological enthusiasts, you could spend a whole trip learning about all the different ruins. So let's move on and show you Calpiche. Okay, so what I found most interesting is um, when you translate Calpiche, place of ticks. <laughs> um, archaeologists were able to uncover ticks in their excavations. Uh, I didn't encounter any ticks there today. Uh, the most problem that you have is sand fleas when you're at the beach and mosquitoes. Those are kind of the only things that uh, we have problems with. So the site is itself is on the hilltop home of the, an elite uh, Mayan family overlooking the McCall River. Uh, the population, this is a small um, ruin, 10 to 15,000 people at the peak. Some of the other surrounding ones, uh, they estimate way, way more than this population. Uh, it was abandoned in 880. It was excavated between 1988 and 2000. There's a really nice interpretive center uh, when you first come in, and uh, it's known as an archaeological reserve, and there are periodical digs that take place, but it's not all uncovered. So when you first come into a reserve like this, uh, you can see uh, that they've got it set up. So you can see where the people lived, um, and you can see that there's artifacts that they have in uh, the, the museum and, and how it would have looked back in the time. Lots of opportunity to climb stairs, um, get a view of the canopies above. And Mike, as you mentioned, there's lots of trees that are growing on top of the ruins. So this has been fully excavated. Uh, there's other areas where there's big mounds that are not excavated. So um, overall, uh, there's a collection of over 30 structures with 25 meter temple in the central Acropolis. And that includes seven plazas, with pyramids, temples, stelas, small courts, and residence. 
there's even an area that it looks like a steam room or something. Beautiful, beautiful. Lots of, you could spend a whole day in there just kind of relaxing, having picnics, just taking in the beautiful sights. And it's, it's not just a little area, it's quite, quite large. I think this was a bedroom on the right hand side. It's hard, there's no signage to tell you. Um, it would have been good to have um, a guide take us through, but we, we opted just to kind of just explore on our own. Okay, so we'll move on to um, another thing that we did is we attended the, the Saturday um, market day with the local artisans. Um, lots of jewelry making, basket makers. Uh, this lady on the right, um, she uh, her husband makes baskets uh, of Belizean wood. And in the bottom corner is somebody making tortillas. The food was amazing. We went two separate occasions to the Squabalim. Uh, best oven fired pizza, original dishes, local ingredients, desserts, fruit, in, infused drinks. Uh, what? I'm not sure which culture does this, but in glass jars above the bar, they would infuse rum with fruit. And then they would leave it sit there for a duration, and then they'd mix it in to make uh, gin drinks or uh, other kinds of drinks. It's really, really good. I've never seen that before when I've traveled. Lots of fish and lots of beef. Uh, they, because of the influence of the Mennonites and farming, there are a lot of cattle there and dairy cattle. Okay, like they're they're not like Mexico. They're a little bit like the, um, not unaffordable, but if you want a good steak, you're you're paying between say thirty forty dollars, uh, for a good steak. Yeah, what well, we pay here, yeah. So it's it's affordable. So we stayed in um in San Ignacio for I think it was a week, and then um. We were heading back to Belize City, and uh, the Belize Zoo um, had been affected by the hurricane that went through there. Um, so it was open, I think, maybe a couple weeks before we uh, went through there, and we got to go and see uh, some of the animals that were there. Um, some of the uh, the cages were still damaged and uh, they weren't allowing you into certain sections. Uh, so this is kind of a cross section of the animals that we've seen. Uh, I was really uh, interested in this little cat at the bottom. They didn't have um, a jaguar per se. Uh, they, I think they had a jaguar, but it was one animal that we didn't get to see. Uh, the bird in the middle, um, I can't think of what it is right now. A hairy eagle, I think it was. And you can just imagine uh, uh, the inspiration of Mayan people to this bird because of the, it had kind of this headdress. And it kept, you know, I, I could spend a half an hour just watching it because it was watching me and, and kind of we were mimicking each other's uh, movements and stuff, but really, really, really neat. The howler monkey is also, I'll just go back. Um, the uh, monkey in the center is uh, the howler monkey. And in amongst the, the forest area, you can hear these monkeys screaming. So that's the howler monkey in the middle. Uh, they, they are native to the area and they make a very uh, strong noise. <laughs> Okay, so this is our last stop um, when we were traveling uh, for three days uh, north of Belize City, a place called Seaside Chalet Resort. 
um, it looked nice and um, uh, it was nice when you look at it, but uh, unfortunately for me, I I got um, really bitten by sand fleas here. And if you haven't had sand flea bites, it's it's uh, be very uh, annoying. I didn't want to go outside in uh, in the sand much because uh, they had started attacking your your raw skin, and so um, it wasn't as as good as I expected it to be. But what's beautiful about the surroundings is um, it's very peaceful, very quiet, nice location. It's away from the main area of crime in Belize City. They had a pool, the restaurant uh, had minimal service. You weren't able to um, buy much alcohol here if you wanted to have a drink. And it is very isolated. We ended up um, taking our car rental back and thinking that we could, there's lots of stuff around here. No, not really. <laughs> so um, what we ended up doing is we hired a driver the next day and we went on a tour of another ruin. So here's just uh, some of the area. Um, there is the Belize River on one side and um, apparently just off the coast, the Manti um, are in this area. I, if we would have had more time or been outside more, we probably would have seen the mountain kind of going out the rivers. Um, lots of mangroves. Um, and there was some effects from the hurricane here. Um, but really a nice place, but we wouldn't stay here again. <laughs> okay, so our final day, we went to Atunha Temple, and this is north of where we were. Uh, this was, every every um, ruin has a different focus, and this one was uh, known as a trading center. Um, what's unique about it is it's closer to Mexico, and uh, there's lots of trading that went on here. Uh, it covers eight square kilometers, founded in 19, or 900 B.C., um, and what they uncovered here was uh, actually a na national treasure of Belize. Uh, it's a large jade artifact. Uh, they keep it really protected because it's very, very valuable. And you can see um, uh, in the last photo here of what the, uh, um, the jade carving is all about, uh, this particular um, um, deity that uh, their god that they're honoring here. Um, the other interesting feature about this ruin is it has a stone water deposit or cistern uh, where they store water. And that was very important um, uh, for growing crops and stuff. Um, this site was only um, discovered in 1963. It was first excavated in 1965 and set in 1970. Um, it was during the ex excavation that they found this um, jade head. Um, what's um, interesting is they haven't uncovered everything here. Um, it is uh, lots of mounds, but um, definitely has some unique features. You can see me on top of, um, looking over on top of the canopy. So it's close to the Caribbean Sea and it's linked to many trading uh, things. Uh, in the interior and then uh, the sea routes take them to other countries. Some more photographs. Lots of similarities with uh, climbing stairs and um, different sporting events that they um, have courts for. And our driver after took us um, from north of where we were staying um, into Belize City. Um, he wouldn't allow us to um, to leave the car in certain parts of the city because he said it's unsafe for tourists. Um, so it was more of a driving tour. We did stop at the lighthouse and 
the liaison to get a photograph. Uh, but as far as um, stopping anywhere else, like I said, it's not safe. So uh, most of our photos of the Lee City are in the car. So a couple of interesting facts about the Lee City in our next slide. It's the largest city in Belize, um, 61,462 people. The city was originally a small Mayan trading post. It was completely destroyed in a hurricane in 1961. It's home to the oldest Anglican church in Central America. It's built on a swamp. It hosts the largest street party in the country. And it's not recommended to go in the inner city as it's very unsafe. That being said, there's lots of, of uh, local people around. We went, were driven around one of the poorest areas um, and there's lots of stabbings and gunfire and, and people. Uh, so um, you, can, you can tell uh, the difference between uh, where the affluent people live versus the, the poor districts. But it was definitely worthwhile uh, just exploring the city and the area for the day. So this is our last slide. And uh, we had a wonderful time. We really enjoyed the leaves. Um, and all the um, cuisine was fantastic. So thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> thank you.